各位网友，你们好，欢迎你观看我们的节目。我们大家都知道呢，最近这个申请美国大学的这个工作已经进入了白热阶段。这个呃，早期决定 （early decision） 这个已经基本上呃快结束，而且常规的申请呢也正在进行。很多学校呢，它的这个期限是一十月月底或者十二月月底。我们今天呢，我们大家请来的一位美国著名的一个就是专家，他呢在美国的一个著名的中学工作了近十七年，专门是辅导就是中学生在申请工作中，特别是呢在就是申请中间写的这种个人陈述和各种各样作文的这个这个写作，他的很有经验，很丰富。我们大家都知道呢，就是在大陆的学生申请啊考学的时候。那就是一个高考结束了，在美国的大学呢，虽然比较容易，但是呢，他就要求很多各种各样的程序，比如说你要考了 SAT、AST 这些硬的指标以外呢，还有一个很重要的一个软指标，那就是这个大学的一个呃论文，也就是呃个人陈述。有的学校呢还会问一些你，比如说你要啊、呃，你为什么要选这个专业等等。这个问题呢，就是很多可能对于很多学生来说都是个头痛的事情，因为呢，要在五百字或六百字之内呢，要展出自己的陈述，这是一个非常难的事情。而且呢，在这个东西呢，现在这个作文呢变得越来越重要。现在呢，大约是硬指标的指标相同的情况下，它这个这个作文呢，就占了一个主要的一个一个一成为一个主要的一个因素。所以呢。怎么样的，在这个五六百字之内呢，要把自己写的，把自己的故事写得很精彩，而且呢，逻辑要很清晰，而且呢，同时呢，就要语法和拼写没有错误，能够你在众多的这个申请生中间呢，能够崭露头角，这也是一种技巧。我们今天呢，就跟那个我的我们这边的一个专家叫 Lori t r a i n 大家谈一谈。Lori 呢，他是在这个。芝加哥的一个著名、比较历史悠久的叫拉丁学校，工作了近十七年。他的主要呃工作呢，就是辅导学生的作文和论文，然后特别是在毕业生的时候，帮助他们去编辑和辅导，他们如何在申请工作中间能够崭露头角。我们知道拉丁学校呢是一个私立学校，它的升学率非常高。在呃 Lori 的帮助下，过去的这几十几年中吧。他已经有呃很多学生进入了常青藤。我昨天查了一下他们学校的这个毕业表呢，大约有耶鲁大学十一名，普林斯顿七名，呃，还有这种呃哥伦比亚六名，反正就是他们的学校整个的这个升学率很高，所以呢，他的经验也很丰富。我们后边部分呢，就要用英文来采访，希望呢，我们的网友，如果你看到，如果给你的孩子呢，如果需要他帮助的话。让他们看我们的这个直播，谢谢 ，Lori， thank you for coming to the program. Oh, it's so nice to be here, Wen. Thanks for inviting me. Great.、Uh, I just、uh, did a brief Chinese intro. Is it possible to tell us about yourself in English for people who just uh, uh, tuned in? Sure. I've been working at the Latin School of Chicago for about 17 years, and I've been working with students really in the last four years in a very concentrated way, helping them write their personal statements for their college as for their college applications. And in you know very recently, I began a business,、uh, the College Essay Writing Center, where I teach online classes and help students write their personal statements. Part of what I love about doing this particular job is that I get to help students be better writers when they are extremely invested in the process. They want to do well. They know their audience, and they certainly know their purpose. That's great. The college essays is becoming so important lately. How important it is? I mean, for a lot of the students, if they have very high SAT scores. Or ACT scores. Why do they have to worry about、uh, the、uh, the essays? 
Well, here's the important thing. The, the personal statement is a critical part of your application because it is the part of your application that really tells about you. It's beyond what any college would see on your transcript. It's beyond what any college would see on your activities list. And you have an opportunity to show who you really are, your personality, your voice, your interests. And the questions on the, on the for instance, on the common application range from things like, tell us about something that we need to know about you, or tell us about a time you failed or were challenged. And those kinds of questions really seek to find out what do we need to know about you to see if you belong at our school? So do you mean to say that um, many of the, the well-known schools here, right now they have very stringent requirements or they attach great importance to college essays? They do. They do. And in fact, there have been several articles uh, uh, not too long ago, one in the New York Times, talking about this exact thing, that this piece has become even more important because it gives that personal view. And on top of everything else, then the colleges can see how you write. Writing is a critical skill. Writing is important um, in, in, at any university. So writing is becoming more important, which means that the students need to spend more time on the college essays. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, when I used to work for the University of Chicago, some people just automatically assume that I know a lot. They come, uh, they used to come up to me and uh, ask different questions, especially the Chinese students, meaning like how can they express themselves in the 600 words? Should they tell a personal story or should they just give some of their views? So uh, what is your advice on that? You know, it's interesting that you mentioned the University of Chicago because they have a very interesting application that's quite different from other schools where they really ask for a lot of creativity. But I would say that that I would advise students to stay away from listing accomplishments. Um, there are some pitfalls here. I had a student once who was an Eagle Scout, a brilliant student, who, who just kind of bragged in his essay about his list of accomplishments and the things that he had done. And the trick about the, this Common App essay is that you almost have to be a little vulnerable and that's not always easy for people, but that helps you connect with your reader. You have to think a little bit about these college admissions officers, right? They have a stack of papers in front of them. They have, you know, 500, 1,000, 1,500 that they have to go through. And that one that jumps out, that's interesting, that tells a story, that's going to be the one that gets their attention. That's true. I have a neighbor here who works at uh, Northwestern. She says that uh, from uh, no November or to February, she just that doesn't go to work. She just has to go through hundreds and hundreds of applications. So it is very important to write something that uh, will make you stand out. Absolutely. I mean, let's say you've played the piano for 14 years, right? And you want to talk about that because it's an important part of your life and it's your passion and you want to share that. That's great. But maybe you should tell a story about how you once made a big mistake and what you learned from it and how then you grew as a person, right? Or that your grandmother was a musician and inspired you and talk about you know, your connection with her and all you learned from her. So there are different kinds of approaches that you can take. Every great essay has a story, a reflection on that story, and then some insight. Some insight that you can show, oh, this is what I learned. So you're, uh, we were just talking about the pitfalls, right? So you think the first thing that students try to avoid doing is just to simply list the accomplishments. Say, right. I did that, I won this award, I helped, I volunteered at this center, blah, 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 that kind of situation. 
Right. And you have to be really careful of that because you have, you know, a, an application has several parts to it. It has your transcript. So the colleges will know your grades. You don't really need to talk about that. It will also have a list of your activities in school. So it will show your interests and your passions. It's important instead of that, that you show the human side of yourself, that you, you know, can be vulnerable and maybe even a little funny that you can show that you're a unique and interesting person who will add something to their college. Right. So you mean that uh, avoid the accomplishments, but start with something uh, more personal. Absolutely. Think about what you value. Think about what your goals are. Maybe, maybe your values, you know, come back to you. You really want to be financially secure. Maybe your value is your family. Maybe your value is creativity or art or self-expression. Everyone has a different value, right? So right. follow your value when you're writing your essay and it will lead you in a great direction. Okay, so when you pick a personal story, so how do you decide which one uh, is interesting? For example, I've noticed that uh, from my experiences with some students, uh, one of them is a Chinese American and the other one is Latino students. They always try to find something that more uh, a generic or common experience. So I always sometimes tell them, say, why don't you find a unique story in your unique upbringing or your culturally unique things? Is that something, which approach would you uh, tell them to? You know, it's interesting follow? because Right. It kind of depends on the student, because I had a student this summer, in fact, who um, was an immigrant from China, and he wrote a beautiful story about um, living in China and having a man fry tofu outside of his house and how he used to sit next to him and listen to him and watch him. And he and he reflected on that man's experience and what he added to his life. And so that was a very unique cultural background, right? But then I've had, other, I've had other students write about things like washing the dishes or walking to school, you know, sort of those experiences that they can show something, something interesting. I would avoid the um, essay about community service because that can sometimes be overdone. Uh, it seems that every aspiring engineer wants to write a story about how they like to build with Legos. Okay. <laughs> Probably not the best approach to take. Okay, so uh, another pitfall, which means students try to avoid writing about community community services. Because it's just overdone, unless you have some amazing story, right? If you have a great story, then that's different. Um, if you have spe a special insight to offer. but But the classic student essay is, I did community service and I went to help people, but they ended up helping me. And it's just like, it's so overdone. It's just so overdone. Like, cliche. exactly, exactly. Which means that when you pick a personal story, it needs to be something unique, insightful, rather than just follow a cliche, right. like a community service. Okay. And it needs to show like what you value, right? If you value um, financial stability and hard work and you've been working at your family's business since you were eight years old and you have some fun stories to tell about that, that's great, right? That's wonderful. Right. Um, you know, if you value your family and you want, I had a student this year who um, was just great. He was in my um, online summer course and he wrote about how he wanted to learn how to make a steak and his parents own a Chinese restaurant and he decided he was going to learn how to make a real steak. And so he watched all the videos, right? And then he uh, practiced. And then he talked about how he made this kind of steak for his mother and this kind of steak for his father and this kind of steak for his grandfather. And he showed how much he cared for his family. But he also showed how he had this passion and interest in cooking. So from what you have told me, it's like the stories doesn't have to be very big. Doesn't have to be like uh, helping with the community. I went to help with the disadvantaged people, but it's something in your life. It's very small incident. Right. And from this incident, you draw some insights. Yes. 
and your okay. insights, that's what makes it unique, right? That's what makes it special. I had a student who ended up um, going to Princeton who wrote an essay about how he saw a bear in the woods when he was camping. And it was a beautiful essay because he talked about how seeing the bear woke him up to wilderness experiences and how he wanted to work in the wilderness, in nature. And that's what he's doing right now with his life. So, so it's interesting. You have to kind of think about what you care about, and that should come across in your essay. That's very important because from uh, the essays I've read written by some uh, Chinese American students or from Chinese students who are applying for American schools here is that they uh, tend to uh, write in generic terms about the abstract ideas saying, I want to overcome my challenges. I want to overcome difficulties, so blah, 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 blah. But you, from you have told me is start with a very personal, small story and then develop into some kind of a very unique insight. Absolutely. That is absolutely the way to go. And, and the more because they want to learn about you and, and colleges want to hear you speaking in your voice not in your teacher's voice or your parent's voice or your tutor's voice. You know, you have to, you have to, you know, maybe work with someone who's going to help you find your voice or, or find your own voice, right? Um, and, and really be able to express yourself the way that you would. Um, that's super important. That's great. And after you come up with a very personal story, how do you normally uh, link with the, the theme of the essay or with what you study, what is, what is your advice on that? I mean, so it's, it's, go ahead. It's interesting because I've seen essays that are structured so many different ways. Some students, I, I worked with a student last year who's currently at Carnegie Mellon, and she wrote an essay where she told three stories three very distinct stories about how she um, likes to ask questions. And then at the end, she just had a very brief paragraph and I still keep asking questions, you know, and that's how she ended it. But she gave three wonderful stories. Then I've had other students who have told a story and then reflected on it and then had an insight at the end. That's a very typical approach um, that works really well. People like to start with a story. When you start right in the middle of the action, that's very compelling. And that first paragraph is important. The first paragraph is very important. Yes, to because grab you, the attention of the person. Absolutely. Which means in journalism, we call the lead. Correct. <laughs> you try to grab the reader's attention. So, yes. uh, so the other thing is, I noticed that sometimes just telling a story is not enough, which means that you have to, do you have to have a couple of paragraphs talking about the insights? What have you learned from the story? Yes. How relevant it is? Uh, to your study, right? Absolutely. And one of the things that you can do is have, you know, a moment where you sort of reflect upon that and then tell what you learned, you know, sort of a, a reflection paragraph and then a paragraph where you offer that insight. And suddenly your story takes on so much more meaning and is so significant. Even if it's a simple story like how you walk to school every day. You know, maybe how you walk to school every day shows how you are organized, how you learn to take shortcuts, how you are outgoing because you've met people and given them directions in your neighborhood. You know, you can say so many things in a reflection um, that really show uh, that you've thought about it. It's also very fun and very effective to do what we call a circle organization, where you start with the story, then you reflect on it, you have your insight, and then you kind of go back to the story at the end. The end, you, you start with a story, your personal reflections, and then your insights, and then come back to the story. Exactly, it's so powerful. That's great. So that's uh, for students they need to uh, to know. The other thing is I've noticed and um, that when since they have to work under such pressure when they finish the, the piece, is it very important for them to proofread everything very carefully? I notice there are sometimes typos and grammatical errors that can be detrimental, right? It's a huge problem. And I would say that it's the one thing that some colleges will just put you in the no pile if they see 
grammatical. Yes. Yes. Yes, because it shows that you're not the kind of person who would take the care, right? This is probably the most important document that you have produced as a student in a lot of ways. And so if you are not taking the time to proofread it or to correct typographical errors, then that's a problem. So which means that after they finish the essay, they need to carefully proofread it or have somebody else proofread it for them? Yes, but be careful about asking somebody else to proofread for you. Make sure you're asking the right person, right? Um, a teacher you trust or your college counselor, right? Or someone else you're working with. Just be careful of that because sometimes not everyone knows the grammatical rules as well as they think they do. And that could be a little dangerous too. One of the things I sometimes tell students is to read their essays backwards because then uh you're not going to skim over a word. You're going to look at every word to make sure that it's right. And even though we have all you know brilliant computers that help us with our spelling, there are many words that are spelled many different ways. So it can it can skip by Microsoft's lovely spell check. That's nice to know because I've noticed that uh, might maybe it's a cultural reason with the Chinese students I have uh, helped. And one of the main things is sometimes the, the ideas could be very good, but the copy could be sloppy. So in your, uh, your advice is that you have to find the right person to help you proofread it. Yes, yes, absolutely. And you just have to make sure you take the time to do it too. Sometimes you have to write it and then put it aside for a week and then go look at it again. It almost needs to rest. And I would strongly suggest, so of course, applications for early decision are due tomorrow, right? So that is, wow, that is right here. But January 1st is the next deadline, right? And that's the deadline for the regular decision. So if you're working on a, you know, thinking about applying regular decision, I would suggest having your essay really done by the middle of November so that you could put it aside and then look at it with fresh eyes. I think it makes a huge difference. That's great. That's uh, great advice uh, uh, to know. Uh, the other thing is, after they are done, and uh, this is the, the personal statement, I noticed that in uh, uh, some colleges, they require some supplemental questions. For example, I noticed last year with some of the applications with the UCLA, all those schools, they have a series, uh, a series of questions like, why are you uh, you know, why do you want to choose this major? What makes you, you know, uh, uh, what do you think is your best quality? You know, those supplemental questions. When students answer these questions, what should they do? So you have to be careful because you want to show that you've learned about the school, right? You want to show that you've taken the time to actually understand the school and done a little research. Um, so that you have some idea what the school is all about. You know, why do you want to go to Caltech, right? And right. then and then you need to be able to answer that question. So you should show that, but you should also, you know, they know the statistics of their school. You don't have to tell them their statistics. You know, you don't say, well, I want to attend your school because you have a 12 to 1 student teacher ratio. You know, they know that already. You can just say, I enjoy small classes. You know, I learn best when I'm in a small class. And, and that's one of the great advantages of Caltech or wherever, you know, whatever you're thinking of. So in other words, avoid uh, uh, wasting your the, the word counts on those stats or facts that is already that you the, the 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 university already they know about it. They don't need to read from <laughs> you, right? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, but you need to be straightforward with that kind of questions without telling stories or anything like that. You do, although you can tell a little bit of a story, like just a hint of one. You know, if you want to attend a business school and you're saying, you know, I think I'm destined for Wharton, you know, ever since I uh, started my first lemonade stand when I was four years old, you know, and just I mean, you can have just a little little human interest bits that show us who you are, you know, and why you might want to study that. Great, that's 50 or 60 words, because normally it's like 300 words, so right. 350, right? It's tiny. Very tiny. So we've covered these grounds. So if uh, we want to, for somebody who are, 
uh, uh, who is preparing for the application now, you want we want to give them some like a takeaway, right? When they are writing the essays now, what are the some the top uh, uh, advice that you want to give to these students? Okay, here's what I would say. Number one, number cons one, consider your values, right? Consider what matters to you. Uh, go through a list of, you know, there's a bunch of places online you can find sort of lists of values and look through and think, you know, what are the things that are important to you? Are your friends important to you, your family, your, like I was talking about before, financial stability, creativity, you know, politics, are you interested, what are you interested in, right? So that's the first one, because you, it, you have to know yourself a little bit before you plunge into this process, because you want your essay to truly reflect you, you don't want it to reflect your mother, you know, it should it should be reflecting you. So what are your values? That's number one. First value, okay. what matters to you the most? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And the second one is tell your story. Tell your story. Tell the story of you. Tell a story. Tell maybe, you know, two stories, but but you can tell, you know, just one good story, something that captures that value that we talked about first, right? Right. So something that really will show us, oh, this is what I value. Um, but it's, it has to be your story. And that story should include dialogue, right? It should have people talking within it. It should have us right in the moment. It should use good sensory detail. It should have all of those pieces that, that make any story compelling, right? If you're telling a story to a friend sitting next to you in the cafeteria, you're going to tell a story that has dialogue and is interesting and has a, you know, clear beginning, middle and end. All of those things are important. So that's the second thing. Second thing, uh, tell, try to find a personal story. Yes. And uh, OK, I sometimes tell people it's hard, but you always it's good to talk with your parents or with your friends sometimes during the conversation. And a story maybe, you know, comes up or you get inspired by something. Absolutely. Yes. Talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, talk to your friends, talk to your brothers and sisters. You know, see if, you know, when you think of me, what story do you think of? And you might be interested in the answers, right? That's kind of a fun question to ask anyway. It's just a, it's a fun, it's a fun party question to ask, you know, somebody, what, when you think of me, what, what story do you think of? And I think that's a great way to contemplate that concept. That's great. So the second one. Now let's come to the third one. So the third one, use your own voice. Don't use someone else's voice. Sound like you. If you suddenly sound like, you know, someone who's a generation older, you're not going to sound like you. College admissions is going to say somebody else wrote this essay for them, right? You, you want to sound like somebody who's 17, 18 years old. I mean, that's who you are, right? And, and so, so, yes, you want to show that you're a good writer and you're thoughtful and you're interesting, but you have to use your own voice. And there are some things you can do in an essay like this. It doesn't have to be super formal. You can use contractions. You know, you can say I'm instead of I am. You can use second person, like you can say you. You know what it's like? when you fall asleep before you want to, or you know what I mean? Like you can actually bring in the reader with second person and it's it's nice, it's, it's a little casual and that's okay. If you're kind of a casual person, if you're a very formal person, that might not be the right essay for you, right? right so right, would, right. that would be my second thing is use your own voice. I mean, my third thing. The third thing. I, I like this point uh, a lot because uh, when I talk with the students, they they try to sound more sophisticated than they actually do because they they want to people to they want to give the impression that uh, they're you know they're very deep and in certain things they are very sophisticated and sometimes when you tend to overdo this and it's no longer you anymore, right? It sounds fake, and you don't want to sound fake. You don't want to sound fake. You don't want to sound boastful. You know, you want to be a little vulnerable and you want to talk, you know, almost as if you were talking to a friend. You know, now you can do creative things. You can use metaphors and similes and personification and, you know, you can use those devices. But I would strongly advise to not take on an artificial academic voice. This isn't an academic paper. 
it's more personal asset. Great. So what's your next one? Do you have so another so one? The fourth one, I would say work with someone who can help you, somebody who has experience, but ultimately trust yourself, right? You want to be expressing you. So working with someone is good. Be careful you don't work with 20 people because you'll get 20 opinions and then you can't decide who's right, right? But work with someone you trust, you know, is there a college counselor? Is there an English teacher? Um, is there some mentor you have? Um, you know, is there a tutor you can find? Is there someone who you can work with who you trust? Um, and that would be my fourth thing because you, and, and of course, ultimately though, you want to be expressing you. And that's, that's part of this also, um, you know, get a little help, get a little guidance. That's great, but it still should be about you. So I, um, uh, run into questions like, I know like some applicants, uh, outside the U S they have, uh, they try to seek help from different agencies. These agencies, or they have, uh, they pay somebody to specifically write the essays for them. Is that a, some kind of number one ta taboo? You should never do something like that. Never, right? never. Because if if anyone, if it doesn't sound like you, if it, it's not your story, right? That's going to come across. But the next thing is, is if someone finds out about that, there is just, a, you know, you're basically telling a lie on your application. Right, and, and you will not accept serious. it. Right. From your experience, if somebody give you an essay and written by some uh, other people, you can probably easily spot it right away, right? In a minute. And believe me, college admissions officers can do that in a second, right? If you have 1,500 of those to read, you get pretty good at it. Okay. So seek some help, but not have somebody else write for you. No, never. Do you have anything, another one? Or so I have number five, okay? okay number Here's five. number five. Edit and proofread carefully. <laughs> I don't turn in something with a typo. Don't turn in something that's littered with errors. Um, it's It will put you in the no pile right away. And, and you deserve to be in the yes pile. So take your time and make sure that you proofread. That's great. And then just... Don't be sloppy thinking that your ideas are good. People will, they will like it. But if you have a couple of typos, that uh, the ruin the whole, it could all of your efforts. Yeah, it could. And you don't want that. So, I've heard stories. Uh, do you have any other uh, suggestions? That take Those away? are my main points. Those are my five points. Main. Yep, that's it. Five points. That's great. Uh, so uh, I've heard. Uh, stories about how students they 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 got they scored really high on SAT ACT, but then there something wrong with the paper or something because this they uh, lost some opportunities. Is that true to, from your experience? Yes, absolutely. There's so many kids who prep really well for the SAT and the ACT and and score, you know, right up there in the top scores who are the valedictorians of their classes, but they have a personal statement that doesn't sing, right? That's not, it's not the, the personal statement that reaches out to that college admissions officer. Now, not every college is right for every student. And, and that's the other thing that, that I would really suggest that people remember, right? That, that it's a little bit like a dating service, that they know what they want and you know what you want, and let's see if we can match those together, right? But it's it, every student, you know, won't necessarily get into every university, but there is a place for every student. That's great. So um, if students they have, you just said that if they need the help, they should seek some counseling or seek some help. Sure. And what are the things that you help? I, do, I know that you have, uh, I mentioned in the intro that you have set up this college essay center to help students. What kind of services do you offer students? So we do online classes. We have online classes. For instance, I have a series of classes on Saturdays in November um, where we work through the essay. It's it's kind of a wonderful situation where you, you meet other students online 
You have an experience of reading examples of other essays. You workshop your essay, you go through it carefully, you learn how to organize it, you learn how to really find that topic. And then you also work with someone, usually me, who will help you, you know, edit it and sit with you and on Skype, you know, and go through and carefully go through your essay with you. And I find those meetings to be incredibly rich because I have an opportunity to teach students better writing skills. And of course, I'm an English teacher and that's what I'm really all about. Um, I also um, do offer some tutoring sessions and that's also, one on one. yep, one-on-one. -on -one. And that's also on my website. So I'm, you know, delighted to do that. I really like to work with students one on one. Also, it's very enjoyable. You can really dig in. Um, some students like the community better in the class. Other students like more of the personal touch. So which means they can attend a Saturday class to improve their how to, to t uh, learn how to do these college essays. Yes. And then if somebody they in a rush, they said, I want a one on one, they can set up, uh, they can connect with you and then uh, get uh, private coaching, right? Absolutely. So what during the private coaching, what, uh, what things do you offer? Do you help them edit the essays or develop ideas? And uh, what do you do? All of the above. So it kind of depends on how much time you want to spend. Um, I have students who come to me who don't even have an idea yet. Right. And then we work through, you know, what are your values? What are your ideas? OK, let's look at structure. Let's think about the stories you can tell. Let's think about how to organize that, um, you know, write a rough draft. Let's play with that. Let's see how that looks, you know, organize it. And I have students who come to me who already have a draft and they say, I just need somebody to sit down and edit it with me and make sure it's right. And I'm happy to do that. Right. I think that's, that's very helpful. Oh, yes. Go ahead. No, and I just, I, I love that process too, because a student is so invested in this piece of writing. And when you get to work with a student one-on-one -on -one who's so invested in a piece of writing, it's just, it, it's really enjoyable. And, uh, and it's fun to sort of, I mean, I'm a grammar nerd, right? So I really like digging into the grammar and saying, oh, look at where, what do you need in this sentence? Do you need some punctuation? And, and talking about that and getting into those wonderfully detailed points with a student is just fantastic for me. Oh, that's great. And uh, if uh, students, if, for example, for those who live in China right now, and they can do the online session, right? Yes, they have absolutely. To go to Pittsburgh and then go to Carnegie Mellon to uh, to meet with you, but they can do it online, uh, both for, with one-on-one uh, -on -one private tutoring as well, right? Yes, and I, you know, of course, sadly, I don't speak Chinese or Mandarin, right? So, so I don't have that skill, right? But, but I do. I would say that um, that if a student understands English, then the online class or the online tutoring would be super. I'm also delighted to hear from people who speak Chinese. I have lots of folks who could translate for me. Right, which means that if they want to reach out to you, they can write a Chinese email. You will be able to answer them. Uh, yes, perfectly. I think that would be a very great service to help with uh, students who live in China who want to apply for American colleges. They need some advice or for Chinese American kids who live in other cities, right? And then uh, could you repeat your, your, the, your website again? We might put it on the screen, but you could uh, repeat that for us. Sure, it's, it's www.collegeessaywritingcenter.com, all one word. Or you can meet, you know, actually reach out to me at Lori at College Essay Writing Center. Lori, L O R I. At yes. College Essay Writing Right. College Essay Writing Center. Oh, College Essay Writing Center. That, that's great. And thank you so much, Lori, for your time. That Thanks, Gwen. Very helpful the five takeaways and I hope that uh, students will remember and if you if any of uh, uh, the, the children of our, our, our audience they want private tutoring feel free to call, uh, to contact Laurie and thanks again Laurie thanks so much Wen take care bye 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 now